got a warm place to sleep. Some nights I lie awake counting gifts instead of counting sheep. I've got a heart that can hold love. I've got a mind that can think. Welcome. You are welcome here. I am Pastor Eunhe Che of Glenview United Methodist Church. In this Thanksgiving season, we raise our voices and we lift up our hearts to God in our thankfulness, gratitude to God, to our neighbors, to each other, family. We are so filled with gratitude. Please rise in your spirit or body, and we pass God's peace. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Please turn to your neighbors and pass God's peace. Please 
please remain standing and we join in the prayer, opening prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God and most merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. We give you praise and thanks for all your mercies. Your goodness has created us. Your bounty has sustained us. Your discipline has chastened us. Your patience has borne with us. Your love has redeemed us. Give us a heart to love and serve you and enable us to show our thankfulness for all your goodness and mercy with our songs and prayers. Amen. Good morning. It is now time for the kids to come up as a congregation sings Alle, Alle, Alleluia. Good morning. I have to talk to you guys about something really controversial this morning. Do you know what controversy is? No? Do you, can you tell us maybe what a controversy is? Basically like a very like thought of story. Like is a taco a sandwich or like? Maybe one, two, three. Like, which is better? So it's something that people like disagree on or like think about. Is a taco a sandwich? Or is it a hot dog? And the same with hot dogs, they have lettuce and cucumber and lettuce. 
Okay, so you count hot dog is taco, but not sandwich. Okay, so that is, that some, for some people that is a controversy. So the controversy I want to talk to you about is that when I was growing up, we were not allowed at all to listen to Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. Do any of you have that rule in your house? Okay, so maybe in this crowd, it's not so much of a controversy. Yes, I, yeah, I, I saw those Christmas classes. Yeah, okay, so maybe for you guys this isn't, but our kids, ever since they were young, there's this one radio station, 93.9, that used to start Christmas music after Thanksgiving, and then it started earlier and earlier and earlier, and now, they play it like at the beginning of November. So our new rule is that when the radio station starts, that's when we get to listen to Christmas music. And do you know some people have told me, Miss Beth, that's just wrong. <laughs> what? Well, anyway, the reason I bring it up is because we know it's before Thanksgiving, but we are preparing for our children and youth family Christmas program, so we're going to have to start learning some Christmas songs today in Sunday school. And the last few weeks, some of you have helped make some Christmas ornaments that are going to be part of the program, and we're going to do that today, too. We're going to make some Christmas ornaments out of shells, and I have brought some shells with me. Do you guys want to pass them around and take a look at them? Now, have any of you ever gone to like a beach? Even Lake Michigan has them. If you look carefully between the rocks, they have shells. Have any of you ever collected shells before? Yeah. Yeah. When I was at Shark Tooth Beach. When you were at Shark Tooth Beach, that sounds really cool. It sounds super cool. If you guys want to look at the shells here. Well, the best time to actually collect the shells are in the morning or after a storm because the waves they are really strong like on in tides or in a storm and they will bring all those shells back up onto the seashore or the lake shore and these shells they're old shells the animals actually that made those shells are no longer there right so we just have the shell left behind yeah, they change, snails and hermit crabs will change their shells. But what's the job of the shell when it's on the animal? Yeah. It's pretty much their home. It's their home. It protects them, right? Well, here's the thing. In, at Christmas, in some parts of the world, it's summer. So their tradition is actually, some of their traditions is to go find those shells and to turn them into ornaments. So that's what we're gonna do today. But we're also connected to seashells in a couple different ways. So the first way is kind of like that protection, right? So when my kids, they're adults now, but when they were baptized, the pastor used a seashell to pour the water over their baby heads, right? He used a seashell and it helped the water flow. Yeah, it helped the water flow and it helped remind us that Jesus is like our living water and he's there to help us and protect us and to keep us healthy and strong. And by doing that, we then can also help others be healthy and strong. And I don't know, if is there a shell on our baptismal fount? I think can't tell for sure if that's a shell or not. But on some baptismal fonts, you also see a shell there. So that's one way, right? And the other thing is, when all of those, that's the first part. part. So Jesus protects us and takes care of us like the shells take care of the animals. The other part is, I have another question for you. Do you think if Jesus was walking around the seashore, would he pick up the perfect, beautiful shells or the broken ones? Any of them, all of them. I like that answer. We learned in Sunday school that Jesus does a lot of healing, right? So I was thinking maybe that's like picking up a broken shell. And the thing that's super cool that we can be grateful for is even the broken shells, right? are beautiful. Like if you look at some of these shells, they're chipped, but they have amazing colors in them, 
right? And that's what Jesus does. He sees even people that feel broken. He sees beauty in all of us. And that's something pretty amazing, right? Pretty amazing that we can all be grateful for. And he encourages us to see beauty in everybody we come across, yeah? Because we all have parts of us that are beautiful, even when we might be a little broken or thrown away. So we're going to go to Sunday school. We're going to learn a little bit more about that. But first, we're going to pray. So would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we know God made us all, and even though we aren't perfect, we are so grateful that there's something beautiful in each of us that God can see. Teach us to have eyes like Jesus and hearts like Jesus, eyes and hearts that will look beyond the broken parts to find something in everybody that is beautiful. Slow us down so that we take time to look, stop, and pick up and care for the beautifully broken people and shells scattered in our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you go, I got one more thing. We would like to try Ale Alleluia one more time with everybody in the congregation singing, all you guys singing, and grabbing an instrument and playing it on your way out as loud as you can. Can we try that? Okay, everybody grab an instrument. Miss Cindy's going to start playing music in just a minute here. Go ahead and grab an instrument. Get a good one. Here, I'll help. Yep. Grab one that makes some noise. You want this one? No? Is this one? There you go. Awesome. There might be two there. Maybe. Here, you want this one? You want that one? Perfect. No? Okay. All right, so when you have your instrument, we get that. All right, Miss Cindy, I think we're almost ready. Here we go. Do you want one? Good morning. Um, please turn to page 847 in this book, a Psalm 126, and it is the first response. restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. The Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. Our first reading this morning is from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and I will be reading from the New International Version, which you can find in your pew Bibles on page 1846. I urge then, first of all, 
that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. I invite you to please rise as you are able to hear the reading of the gospel from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33, which you may find in your pew Bible on page 1505. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. 
If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, and thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 667, Shalom. We will be singing just verse number one, but we will run through it four times, and here's how to pronounce it. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom Shalom. Lehit Raot, Lehit Varaot, Shalom Shalom. Now let us sing. Let us pray. Oh God, your peace overwhelms us, covers the whole sanctuary like life-giving water. Your peace feeling more and more from our ankle to knee to waste, to trust our heart, and feel your peace fill whole our beings, our church, and this community, and our nation, and the whole world. Thank you, God, the peace only you can give to us. We unite our hearts in you and listen to your voice. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Thank you, God. Amen. I heard that there are four, not one or two, four different hormones in our bodies that help us feel happy. One of them is dopamine. You may heard that dopamine. It is a feel-good hormone, which is mostly associated with pleasurable sensations, such as shopping, right? Shopping, playing computer games, or watching sports games like Mike Tyson, 
a couple of days ago, all those that boost that kind of pleasurable sensations. I heard the reason why people enjoy online shopping nowadays more than going to a shopping mall is that it gives us double pleasure. First, when we order them, and then later when they arrive at home, double pleasure. We cannot deny that this pleasurable sensation makes us feel thrilled or happy, even just momentarily. The other happiness hormone is oxytocin, which is called the love hormone, not happiness hormone, love hormone. It is essential for childbirth, breastfeeding, strong parent-child bonding, and promoting trust, empathy, bonding in any relationship. There are also serotonin and endorphins. Serotonin is for good sleep, and good sleep helps us feel happy. Endorphins are for pain relief. The interesting thing I also heard about happiness is that meditations, deep breathing exercise like yoga, or just deep breathing exercise, or prayers help us boost all these four happiness or love hormones. But there is one thing that boosts those happiness or happy, uh, those happiness hormones 10 times more than meditations or exercise or prayers. 10 times more than that, boosting those happiness love hormones. What's your guess? That strong, powerful thing. What do you think the best activity or practice is that we can do to boost our happiness, wholeness, or our well-being? It is gratitude. Can you believe that? It is gratitude. Being thankful or finding thanksgiving in small and big things. Gratitude makes us feel happy, help us build good relationships, and make us a better person and a better Christian. Therefore, in today's gospel reading, Jesus says, I say to you, do not worry. He said this, without modern days scientific knowledge of hormones and neurons in our brains. Though he didn't have the scientific knowledge that we have now, he had plenty, plenty examples to point out happiness, contentment, and gratitude in nature, in nature. He says, look at the birds in the sky, look at the lilies in the field, and look at those grass, bushes, plants, and trees. Have you ever taken long enough time to smell a rose and you appreciate for its presence, just one rose for its presence. To look at a bird at the end of a very thin branch and you feel the wonder and thrill with that bird. Or to look at an ant carrying a big piece of breadcrumb, what a leaf. And you feel a message of encouragement that this small ant can do it for its family, and I can do it, surely we can do it. I can carry the burden of my life. At the Bible study group last Wednesday, one of our members, Diana Berger, showed us a picture of an ant carrying a big leaf, big leaf, which is about 10 times bigger than its body. We are all amazed by the devotion courage and strength of this small but amazing ant. That ant in the picture gave us so much joy at the Bible study last Wednesday. There are some books which I go back to again and again. One of them is A Simple Act of Gratitude, How Learning to Say Thank You Changed My Life. That's a title. 
by John Krellick. At age 53, the author found his life at the bottom, a terrible, frightening law. He was a lawyer, and his small law firm was failing. He was struggling through a painful second divorce. He had grown distant from his two older children from his first marriage and was afraid, he was afraid he might lose contact with his young daughter from the second marriage. He was living in a tiny apartment without appropriate heat or air. It was always broken, heat or air. He was 40 pounds overweight. His girlfriend had just broke up with him, and overall, his lifetime dream, the whole lifetime dream of becoming a ju judge, a good judge, seemed to have slipped away beyond his reach. Then, during a desperate walk in the hills on a New Year's Day, he was struck by the belief. He didn't know where it came. He was struck by the belief that his life might become at least tolerable if, if, instead of focusing on what he didn't have or what he worried about, he could find some way to be grateful for what he had. Inspired by a beautiful thank you note his ex-girlfriend had sent to him for his Christmas gift, he imagined that he might find a way to feel grateful and hopeful by writing thank you notes, real formal thank you notes. His goal was to write 365 thank you notes in the coming year. I read that the Bible mentions do not worry or do not be afraid 365 times, one for each for one year every day. In the same concept, he wrote 365 thank you notes for a year every day. It was not easy to find at least one person every day. It is harder than you think. I tried every day, at least one person. And some days, nope, I don't know. <laughs> it was not easy to find at least one person every day to be thankful and to write, actually sit down and write a thank you note to the person. But he did it every day for 365 days. Immediately after he had sent his very first note, first several notes, significant and surprising benefit began to come his way. From financial gain, as a lawyer better, financial gain, to true friendship. That was what he sought for. True friendship from weight loss to inner peace. While he wrote his notes, the economy of our nation collapsed. The bank across the street from his office failed. But thank you note by thank you note, his whole life turned around. You gotta believe that. His whole life turned around. It is a true story, not fiction. How about you? Do you write thank you notes? To whom do you write your thank you notes? Among all 365 thank you notes that the author, he wrote, the one I like the most is for a Starbucks barista of his neighborhood. This guy, Scott the barista, remembered his name, John, and his kind, that his act of kindness delighted him, the author, all day. So that day, he wrote a thank you note to him. I once worked at a McDonald's restaurant. As a cashier, I made coffee and French fries also. Many people complained about the coffee. We know that McDonald's coffee is not the best. 
We know that. And they even yelled at me about the coffee. If somebody gave me a thank you note for the coffee I served, I might have cried there because coffee was small and easy thing we complain about rather than being thankful for. We can find gratitude in small and mundane things. And that gratitude, small and mundane gratitude, boosts our happiness, love, and peace hormones. After Jesus shows how God feeds the birds in the sky and dresses lilies in the field, he says, therefore, therefore, do not worry. In this Thanksgiving season, our task is to find many reasons of therefore, therefore. For an example, this morning, I drank a cup of coffee from the beans that I didn't grow. Therefore, I am thankful. Therefore, I don't worry about what to drink or what to eat. Also, after I finished that cup of coffee, I, I watch out this big window. We have a big way window, and I can see the church and the street, Harlem Street. There was a young dad pushing a stroller, a child in there. Sometimes somebody push, people push their dogs. But this case, a child and this young dad pushing the stroller. In one hand, he had a plastic bag and a grabber. You know the grabber. And then whenever he saw, I saw him from the whole Harlem Street from my house. Whenever he saw a piece of garbage, he, he grabbed that garbage, put that plastic bag, and keep pushing this stroller. I was so moved by his small act of kindness. And that boosted my hormone, happiness, love, and peace hormone so much. And so thankful for his kindness, small act of kindness. In this God's creation, we work for each other, even without knowing that. So we care for each other, and we are thankful for each other's work and service. That's the intent of God's creation, and that's God's kingdom. We may say, what is God's kingdom until I die? I don't know. No, we see God's kingdom in our daily life if we know the intent of God. Therefore, Jesus says to us, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness and all these things, small and big, will be given to you as well. Therefore, we give thanks to God. Amen. Now, when we prepare our hearts for the prayer time, please, I want to remind you that there are prayer request cards in your pew box. Use them, and we pray for each other. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy and forgiveness and everything, but more than anything else this morning, oh God, we lift up our hearts. We raise our voices and give thanks to you, oh God. You remind us just to look at the bird, one bird. Look at that lily, one flower. Look at one tree, one leaf, one ant and find enough reasons we are thankful, we are grateful, we give thanks to you, we give thanks to our neighbors, family, and church members, everybody. Thank you, God. In this silent moment, we remember one person, one flower, one ant, one bird. In this silent moment, we remember it and give you thanks. And of 
God, we open our hearts, ourselves, our whole being to the intent of your creation, to your kingdom, and see everybody, everything, every day from that perspective, from the intent of your creation. And you are filled with happiness, love, and peace. We are so hopeful. We give encouragement to each other. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can carry the burden of life one more day at a time. Yes, we can love each other. Yes, we can forgive each other. Thank you, God. With the confidence, you are always with us and show us, teach us the intent of your creation. We join in the prayer Jesus taught to all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. those who trespass against us. And lead us on temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in your spirit or body when we sing the closing hymn. <laughs> be seated. I want to introduce Nikki, the Director of Development Office of Kurtz Cafe. Please, yeah. Kurtz Cafe is one of our many partners in mission and ministry. Good morning. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. Um, Kurtz Cafe, you have supported us for a good number of years and we couldn't be more grateful. Um, could I see a show of hands of anybody who knows about Kurt's Cafe? Okay, a good number of you. We opened our doors in 2012 as a restorative justice um, cafe. We work with young adults ages 15 to 24 who are living in at-risk 
situations or have had a brush with the legal system. We truly believe everybody deserves a second chance at a good future. And through Kurt's Cafe, we have, since we've opened in 2012, we have graduated almost 700 young adults, and we are very, very proud of that. One of the things that we do like to tell people is that the recidivism rate for the graduates of Kurtz Cafe is only 5%, while the national average is 80%. So our program works. Um, we teach not just restaurant skills, but we teach life skills, such as financial literacy, how to cope, how to be a team member, how to eat nutritional food. A lot of these, actually all of these uh, students, young adults that go through our program, um, face food scarcity. So as part of our mission and our program, we make sure that they have a healthy breakfast and healthy lunch every day that they work. And then at the end of the day, if our cafe has food that's left over, we send it home with the students. Oftentimes these students are young parents themselves and are just trying to make ends meet. Um, this program is typically, if the student is in school, they're a Saturday only um, employee. If they've already graduated from school, then they usually work about 32 hours a week. And yes, it is a paid job. And um, there's different tiers of the program. There's three tiers. You come in at the first tier, you're given a certain hourly rate. At the second tier, you're given a little more. And at the third tier, you're given more. Um, we also uh, offer a daily transportation stipend for these students. And um, a lot of the students have dropped out of school. We help them get their GED. Some of them want to get a driver's license. We help them get their driver's license. And we welcome volunteers. So if you are looking for a volunteer um, role, I promise you, you will be very fulfilled volunteering at Kurt's Cafe, whether it's tutoring, whether it's working front of the house, back of the house, um, you'll find it very rewarding. And again, I want to thank you so much for supporting us for a good number of years. We couldn't be more grateful. Thank you. There is insert, re read it, and also I believe today's uh, fellowship coffee hour that you can taste the goodies from Kurtz Cafe. Try that. And then the membership engagement team is hosting a new program, supper club, dinner club. And there are two options. Please, everybody join one of two, two options. One group, they are going out to restaurants. People take turns to choose restaurants. The other is meeting at home, take turns and hosting dinner. The sign, up, the sign up sheet is in the back of church. Please stop by there and sign up yourself. And then now I, I want to invite uh, Pastor Marilyn Webb, and she will tell us about this amazing fire truck. <laughs> I must first apologize for not telling you about this sooner. Sometimes things are out of our, our control in terms of timing. But do you ever feel a, a, a tremendous attachment to an in inanimate object? Yeah. I, I did recently, last Thursday, when I did a brief word and a blessing for a 20-year-old Glenview fire truck. If I tell you you are very soon driving to Miami to be put on a ship to go to Guatemala, would I make any sense to you? Well, no. I hear people back here saying no, and probably nobody will. Well, you are going in spirit with our Glenview fire truck as it heads to Guatemala to help people who suffer from epidemics, national, natural disasters, and war sent from us as a church through our Glenview Fire Department via Midwest Mission. The story is, 
Last summer in our mission and service committee meeting, Ethel gave us a list of items that the mission, Midwest mission receives to do the incredible work that they do around the world. I looked at that list and I thought, hmm, maybe we could get some fire gear, the protective clothing that firefighters wear. Now when my kids were young, I had a mantra with them all the time. I said, ask. If you don't ask, the answer is no. But if you ask, the answer might be yes. The end of the story so far, we have no gear because that goes from the fire department to the fire academy where new firefighters are trained. But last week, after asking and talking with Chief DeRose of the Glenview Fire Department for a couple months of talking and him doing whatever he does, the chief called me last week and said, Marilyn, we have a truck for you. The fire truck donated to us from Glenview left last Thursday with our blessing for the Midwest Mission near Springfield on the flatbed of a truck. Miraculous timing, it arrived about four hours after leaving here, right in the middle of Midwest Mission's semi-annual board meeting when they had people there from nine states. They were pleased uh, beyond measure that they could show this fire truck and talk about the, mission, or the partnership that they have with us. This fire truck will go to the Order of Malta, the oldest humanitarian organization in the Western world that aids people suffering from so many disasters and a partner with Midwest Mission. God works with us in glorious ways, taking one person's kernel of an idea of giving it fire and bursting that kernel into a reality that we can only say, I can't believe we pulled this off. You can look for more of the story about this in Tom's article in the journal, on the church's Facebook page, in Tom's Facebook page, in last Friday's Glenview Village newsletter, and on the Village website and Facebook, and on our church news, uh, Facebook page. So join us in coffee hour right now and here when the service is over and hear more of our adventure and what our fire truck will mean to the people of Guatemala. And we'll talk more also about Kurt's Cafe. Thank you. Offering plates in the bag, and please return your pledge card if you didn't do it yet. And thank you so much for your all prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witnesses supporting all ministries and mission of our church. Know that, therefore, God prepared everything already. Therefore, give thanks and go in peace. Amen. It says, farewell, dear friends, stay safe, dear friends, have peace, have peace. We'll see you again, we'll see you again, have peace, have peace. We will sing it two times all together, but then we're going to do it like in a round. And so a round means this side with these guys that help over here. We'll start first and then we will go second. We'll sing it a few times till I do that, okay? <laughs> so. Farewell, dear friends.
God's kingdom. Amen. And have a great week, everybody. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but I gotta go get the rest of my stuff.